What's up, Ryan fam? We are back in the gym. We're gonna take you guys through my full body workout. Uh, specifically though, today's main focus is secondary squatting movements and uh, an auxiliary or supplemental deadlift movement. So we got uh, higher rep comp squats done for very low intensity. You guys have seen this in my last couple of videos. Then also I have some RDLs and then we have some close grip incline work. Uh, and then a few other back exercises. So we're gonna take you guys through the whole thing. Uh, today I started out with uh, one set of 10 on the comp squat at 52% of my most recent max, which actually just this last Friday, you guys saw in the video, I squatted 650 pounds. So just about four days ago, uh, I hit a lifetime PR on squats and I'm already back to, to hitting uh, low bar squats. A lot of people were saying, oh, that looked pretty easy. You probably had a little bit more. I definitely think I had at least 10, 15 more pounds in me, but the goal isn't to just like blow myself out of the water and then have to deload for a whole week or anything like that. I wanted to be back in to hard training today. So uh, I took 52% of my max to start today for a set of 10, just one set of 10. As I have been saying in my last videos, I'm a very low volume responder. So that is a lot of working reps for me, uh, which is why I'm starting so light. And also I'm clearly gonna be fatigued from this past Friday, as well as this being a secondary day, which acute fatigue is always higher on my secondary days. So that 52% on today, would be more like probably 56 to 58%, like uh, maybe even a little bit higher because keep in mind, there's no way I'm coming close to a 650 squat on today. I'd probably squat at the very most like 600 pounds today if I maxed out. I mean, it varies that much. So clearly 52% um, is more of like a theoretical 52%. Um, so I started with that, um, really focus on wider stance squats today. Uh, but my hip was bugging me. So I've been trying to widen out my stance here for the last like three, four weeks. And I've done so pretty successfully and I was warming up pretty wide in the beginning, but my hip started to hurt. Honestly, ever since I cut down from 226, uh, about a year and a half, two years ago now, um, I, I have just narrowed my stance dramatically. <laughs> because it really eats the hips up when I do that. Um, and you know, since gaining weight, uh, again, I've been able to slightly widen my stance back out. I think at maximal loads for me, especially when I get into the 600s or more, I do much better with a slightly wider stance. We have a whole video that just released on our group coaching website that actually explained uh, the pros and cons of squatting slightly wider or slightly narrower. I don't believe for most people extremes work, so rarely do I see very narrow squats or very wide stance squats work for anyone at a high level. There are a few exceptions to this rule. David Wilson comes to mind, but generally speaking, most people are gonna be somewhere in that gray area and you have to find what works for you. And so that video really covers the pros and cons of squatting wider versus narrower. It's essentially force transfer based. So wider, you're gonna have less pop from the quads, but be more stable, especially in your core and back. So for me, that's a huge plus uh, because I am so lanky, especially on a squat bar, it's very easy for me to lose position. Uh, other people though, they might benefit from having a narrower stance, uh, but then also it increases your depth and other things of that nature as well. So there's a lot to cover there. But anyway, finish up my set of 10. Now I'm going on to RDLs and at the same time, I'm warming up close grip incline bench just purely for time efficiency because I'm super late today and I'm trying to take you guys through everything. Now on RDLs, I have ascending sets of seven and I'm building all the way up to top set at around RP6, which is decently heavy for me. So it's probably gonna be in the 400s. Really focus on just going controlled and feeling full foot pressure, which is really, really important for me, especially when staying healthy on this supplemental lift because I do exert um, so much force into these. I have um, a really, uh, I, I use really heavy loads because I'm so good at the RDL. So I actually have to be very careful with this exercise. It's very easy to move wrong and kind of tweak something. So today is all about just getting in quality reps. So uh, another announcement worth mentioning is I just, probably got confirmation that we're gonna have a meet sometime here around February at our gym. And if you know me, I do not compete to go to national stages or try to get records or anything like that. I basically like doing powerlifting meets with my friends. So I like doing meets at my local gym or gyms where I know people and we can all have kind of like a PR party. And because we just got word that that might be happening, I texted my coach Dylan and it looks like we might be tentatively around 12 weeks out, 
we will see. It's a kind of a quick turnaround, but I think right now my main goal on everything is to actually chill a bit because you can only sustain a high level of performance for so long before you start to burn out and start spinning your wheels and you see regression. Um, your, your progression comes in peaks and valleys. So you can't sustain, like, like I'm not gonna be able to sustain a 650 plus squat, 750 plus deadlift, and whatever I can do on bench press with this bunk shoulder for like 12, 16 weeks straight. You have to pick and choose your times for peaking. So I think February is probably gonna be a good time for me. And I'll probably start really trying to ramp up about six to eight weeks out where I'm just bucking, pushing it and going full board crazy. Uh, so anyway, finish up those RDLs. Gonna also do some incline bench. I'll walk you guys through that as well as my rows and a few other exercises. All right, so finished out RDL strong. I actually went up to 405, but did them beltless because uh, my rotator cuff was hurting right there. And you can see I'm actually gaining, I'm getting some fucking stretch marks because I've been pushing my lat work like crazy. The last few weeks I've been doing a shit ton of pull-ups and T-bar rows and all sorts of stuff. I did take a quick break from the pull-ups, mainly to peek out that squat just a little bit, but uh, I've just been pushing lat work. And I think my rotator cuff that attaches right at that shoulder joint, it's a little irritated. So uh, I decided to go beltless on the uh, RDLs just so the load was lessened a little bit. And I really focused on extension in the back by popping the chest out and keeping the shoulders back and down. Totally opposite of the way I deadlift, which is protracted and flexed over. Moving on to incline bench now. So I'm going with the close grip and actually in this week's uh, video for our group coaching, I'm actually gonna be filming two videos. One of them is about back work. So how to get the most mobility and hypertrophy out of your row variations, especially close grip rows and how the lats kind of operate with your spine in flexion and extension. And I'm also gonna be discussing in today's video, the pecs and how the pecs are actually best built from a closer grip. At least the majority of the pec fibers, especially the mid and lower fibers, the upper clavicular fibers, not as much. But on most people, um, having your elbows closer into the side rather than really flared out is actually going to promote more uh, overall chest activation and growth. And this has to do with the way the, the fibers fan out. So your uh, pec fibers orient very interestingly, actually very similar to the lats. And this will uh, necessitate a grip that's actually where your elbows are kind of rubbing in a little closer to your body. So contrary to what people think, close grip is not just more tricep dominant. One, your, your range of motion increases on all joints. Uh, so your shoulder joint going through uh, adduction is gonna be actually increasing range of motion. Same thing on the elbow extensors, so your tricep. So, um, and on top of that, the angle actually does activate more pecs as well. So because your elbows tuck more, you're gonna get more tricep, but because the elbows are actually into the side more, you're also gonna get more pec, especially mid lower pec. So this is a very big misunderstanding. We're gonna do a whole video covering that on our group coaching. I always keep the videos really concise and easy to understand though. I don't break out the fucking skeleton in the gym or some drawing board or something because I think that's overly complex. You can just explain this with simple language and all of our group coaching members know I don't do anything fancy in the videos. I basically just talk. But anyway, got ascending sets of seven all the way out up to a top set of around RP eight to nine. So just one all out top set with ascending volume on the way up. Again, low volume response. Then we're gonna do some T-bar rows. Um, although that exercise I might have to pull soon because I'm getting too strong on it. And then we got some curls. Okay guys, sorry, totally out of breath. Just finished T-bar rows. So on incline bench, I worked all the way up on the close grip to 225. Uh, didn't want to load up two plates. Just loaded all the change plates because I was taking ascending sets. Now after I just did T-bar rows, also ascending sets, I think I got up to 525s and 145 pound plate. So you can do the math on whatever that is. But I was talking actually in a video that again, I filmed for the group coaching. I was basically talking about uh, active flexion and extension at the lumbar spine and the purpose it has to the lats because they connect at the pelvis and why sometimes you wanna do your rows with a lot of active flexion and extension in the lumbar area and even the um, upper back, the T-spine. So did a video on that, was covering kind of the mechanics there as far as mobility, hypertrophy and strength carry over and why I do them like that. So whoo, I'm exhausted guys. These workouts are, are tough. Full body training when you're advanced is rough, but I like training less days per week because I feel better that way. And then I just go ham on these days. For me, this is, this is ham because I'm using pretty heavy weights. Um, I'm gonna move on now to some curls for the girls. 
We're gonna finish up with curls. Basically nothing to write home about that. Uh, I do like one really heavy set and then a couple lighter sets. Again, also talked about this in our group coaching, uh, which by the way, guys, if you want an awesome program, free videos every single week, a Q and A that I do every single week, $45 a month. Like I know you guys are spending way more on other shit than that. Go sign up for a group coaching. Uh, if you can't afford it, um, I post a ton of content here as well. So curls, I talked about this in a previous video for group coaching. Basically, I like going really heavy on one set and then kind of lighter on the back down set. So I, I change how strict I am with my form and that's mostly for overload purposes and the, uh, the difference between training end range and kind of mid range of your biceps and other smaller muscle groups. Uh, but anyway, I'm out of breath. This is a video, empty gym. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Comment down below, it really does help out the channel. Let me know what you guys wanna see in future videos. Ah, gonna go kill these biceps, I'll see you guys.